everyone and welcome to Doodle Therapy. It's great to be back. Um, we took a quick break last month, but we are back in action with a really special stream this week. Um, it's great to see everyone in the chat. My name is Alice. I'm an artist and a muralist based in the SF Bay area and I am your host. Um, and yeah, I'm super excited to be here. This week is really special because this is Doodle Therapy's first birthday. We have been streaming for a year um, and it has been a wild ride. We've had over 25 streams with around 20 different guests. So we will be celebrating that in just uh, a few minutes. Um, if you're new to Doodle Therapy, welcome. This is an interactive drawing show here on Adobe Live where our goal is to doodle and chill. Every week we bring on a special guest uh, who we learn from, we chat with, um, get inspired by, and I'm super excited because this week we are welcoming our very special guest, Coco Glez. Welcome, Coco. Hello, thank you for having me, Alice. <laughs> Yeah, to thanks be here to celebrate. Um, thanks for joining day. us. Yeah, um, it's great to have you. I'm really excited. Um, and also, you know, every week that we're on, we have a doodle theme that is related to the guest's area of expertise. So in the past, we've done comic illustrations with Deb Lee, children's book illustrations with Anusha Sayed. And this week, our theme is magic. Uh, we'll be creating magical illustrations with Coco. If you aren't familiar with her amazing work, which we'll take a look at in just a minute, um, it will be soon clear why we chose the theme magic. Um, and so if you're new to Doodle Therapy, the way this works is it's interactive. So feel free to ask any questions that um, you may have about our process, uh, what we're talking about, our conversation, life, etc. in the chat. And also you are totally invited to draw along with us and this week to create a magical illustration with Coco and I. And if you end up creating a doodle, um, please feel free to share it on social media and tag us. I'm at by Alice Lee. Um, and Coco is Coco underscore underscore Glez. And it would really make my day to see um, everyone's submissions. Um, so yeah, without further ado, um, we'll dive into some of Coco's work. I've got some of Coco's beautiful artwork here on the screen. Coco, do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself, um, who you are, your story? Yeah, uh, so I am an illustrator from the south of Spain. Uh, from Malaga, Andalusia, and I've been working as an illustrator for, I'd say this is my third year, and well, it's been a, a bit of um, a ride because well, yeah. we'll, we'll talk later about how we'll everything started, <laughs> but one of my favorite themes is magic because I used to read a lot of fantasy books as a kid and my favorite animes were always the fantastic genre and what were some most of, your of the favorite... things that inspired me and um, oh <laughs> well, well, what were some um, of your favorite animes or books? of course Carrie Captor Sakura was the first uh, anime I watched and I actually watched the full thing a few years ago and it really stuck with me all these years I really like uh, shoujo manga it's how mm -hmm. I started to draw, like <laughs> copying so shoujo mangas that I would buy at the store when they started selling them in Spain because it, it didn't, it wasn't a thing before. And when I was a teenager, it was like the beginning of of uh, them airing anime on TV. We had never mm. seen anything like that. These colors, these expressive eyes, this fantastic world. Um, Pokemon also had a, <laughs> a little bit of the blame. So yeah, yeah I, I love um, magical girls, magical nature, because in Pokemon, there's also this element of 
uh, things that are in nature, but they become alive. So I right. also like to include these little creatures that seem to have personalities. Like I will always sneak like a beetle with a, <laughs> with a personality. I, I really like um, animating things that are uh, usually not that expressive in real life. I like to be yeah. forward with my work. I can totally see that in your work. And, um, you know, if, if you are, for those who are watching, if you are wondering what we mean by magical illustrations, I think Coco's work and like the vibe of your artwork really captures that very well. Um, it's about creating surreal moments, you know, that are using your imagination and bringing something to life that um, is really unique in your artwork. Uh, that's a little bit different from how it would be in real life. So I could totally see that in your work, you know, with the way you've incorporated animals and nature and these really like whimsical uh, elements. And that's what we'll be doing today. And I also just want to um, make a quick note that um, Coco's, uh, normally we have the guest on video, but it's Coco's preference to uh, share just her illustration avatar instead of her video. So we're going to totally go with that and respect it for our stream. Um, and we'll be drawing live and having audio live just as usual. Also, if you're joining us live, um, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. I see some familiar faces already uh, with Susan and Shirley, who have been previous guests. Uh, Tara, Jessica, Christina, Catherine, welcome in. Um, feel free to introduce yourself, share your name, where you're joining us from. And we always have a random question of the day. So our random question of today, since our theme is magic, is um, do you have a lucky charm? And if so, what is it? Or do you have a lucky ritual? Um, so I'll introduce myself really quickly, but if you've watched the show, you're familiar with with who I am. Uh, my name is Alice. I'm an illustrator and a muralist based in SF, although I'm currently based in Taipei, Taiwan. Um, bit of a life update. I also like to create, um, you know, magical, surrealist, whimsical scenes. Uh, like here's two of my works right above me. And um, if I were to name a ritual or lucky charm that I have, it's that I really like to clean my room before I do something important that I'm nervous for. So like before a big show or speech um, or project launch, I'll like make sure that my house is like really, really clean. And for some reason, it feels like I'm like welcoming in this like new experience with like a clean slate and it, it just feels a little bit better for me. Um, Coco, do you have any uh, lucky rituals or charms that come to mind? Well, lately, um, I cannot think of things that I've been doing lately, but I know that when I had to take, like, for example, when I when I took my exam for illustration school, I have to use supplies like pencils or um, an eraser, something that I've been using while I was studying. I like to think that the knowledge is for some reason. Oh, yeah. Uh, your familiar, trusty tools. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I totally feel you on that. Um, cool. Oh, yeah. Thanks for sharing. We're going to dive into the art drawing part of the stream now. So I, we've got both of our art boards here on the stream and we you can see that both Coco and I have actually created our respective sketches for what we want to draw. Um, Coco, do you mind sharing us a little bit, sharing with us a little bit about, you know, what you got going on, your sketch, your plan, what you're focusing on right now? Yeah, so this is um a sketch that I am making because I want to revisit an older piece of mine that is called Science Witch. Because Science Witch. Uh, I have a background in science. So to me, anything that like portrays the magic in daily things, daily little things is a, a theme that I like to revisit all the time. And in particular, uh, to imagine a witch actually following steps that I would consider uh, that belong in the world of human science. Uh, I think it's very funny to, to see her like carefully measuring the drops instead of, you know, just taking a, um, how do you say it, a magic wand and <laughs> making things appear yeah. out of nothing. So yeah. she's here trying to make a recipe for bat familiars, bat 
for now their makeup a path of smoke uh, hopefully one of them will materialize <laughs> we wish her luck in her experience yeah well wish her luck and um i love seeing like in progress shots um like this so it looks like you've got your like rough sketch uh already drawn kind oh, of like yeah. in a pencil style um, and then you doing watercolor so I'm I'm using Adobe Fresco the um, the live, live brushes. I think they're amazing. Like the way they yeah. move, it reminds me a lot of traditional work. Yeah. Um, for those who are watching who are, might not be familiar with Fresco, it's the iPad drawing product um, from Adobe. And I would I would say the watercolor brushes are probably one of my favorite um, features of fresco because i think it's like so unique like you don't quite have this feature in photoshop um where the it's like the ink just like spreads you know when you when you paint with it um so it's it's a really cool it's really cool to see you harness it since um and i think it like suits your work like so well because it's it's just so, so lush <laughs> yeah um and i also want to say welcome to everyone who joined us um, to Arulia, um, who says that they can recognize this cleaning charm in themselves uh, that I described about my lucky charm, to uh, Momo. I love your work, Momo. I've seen it um, on the internets and it's so charming. Um, to Becky, Shauna, um, Nikisha, Dario, thank you for joining us, um, especially for our birthday stream. And um, on my end, I'm also creating a magical girl. Um, you know, who doesn't love drawing magical girls? Um, and for me, um, my style is a little bit different from what this currently looks like. This is just like a like quick line sketch. Um, so I've gotten the composition down. It's this girl who's pouring herself a cup of tea and out of that tea springs forward some magical creatures, some um, fish swimming around and maybe like some stars and the moon. Um, so I'm going to start uh, working on the shapes for that um, now that I've got my quick sketch down. Um, so Coco, you know, one thing that um, is always really inspiring and just so interesting to hear um, when we come on the stream with the guests is what, you know, your story is. So I'd just love to hear like what your journey with art has been. How did you get started? Um, could you tell us a little bit about that? Mm hmm. OK, so as I mentioned, yeah. uh, I like most of, of the people that probably are joining us uh, here today. I have been drawing since I was a little kid. <laughs> like, I don't think I've met I, like I know people who started drawing later in life and I started I drawing later in life. Oh, my gosh. What age did you start? I want to know. <laughs> like. I, you know, I always like doodled and stuff uh, when I was young, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't, I would say I like started drawing for real when I was like 21 um, because before mm -hmm. that I was in business school. So I just never thought of myself as a drawer. Like I would maybe draw on a post-it, but that's pretty much it. Mm, I get what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, I, I, I never thought I was like a drawing person and I was always like really? jealous of people who. Yeah, I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. But like, that's not me, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if, if um, anyone watching can relate, but let us know, um, you know, what your journey has been too, whether you're like Coco, who has always, you know, been interested in drawing and art from a young age, younger age, or like me, who got started drawing basically when I became an adult. Um, so Coco, sorry, I interrupted you, but um, oh, no, you were no. saying that you've always been interested in, in drawing or it's something you've you've had an interest in since you were young. Yeah, but I did take a long break. So I would consider that we have similarities in our story. Because when I was a teenager, as I mentioned, I started buying mangas and trying to copy the like the style, the drawings, and learning anatomy in a very um, non-successful way. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, it, that kind of discouraged me of pursuing art 
um, after high school because the people around me, they would often say that, you know, that they enjoyed my drawings, especially like the orientation teachers at the school, that they would talk to you about possible, uh, your possible paths and everything. And right. I would often get this comment that I wasn't good at realism because I, I attempted it a few times. Oh, I see. Okay. But I did not enjoy it. So I didn't put a lot of effort at the time. You know, being a teenager and being into anime and manga, you mostly want to just recreate the things that you are enjoying uh, watching on TV or reading. And that was kind of my case. So I didn't really put any effort in learning from realism. Um, I also was told by some, I, somebody told me that using references was cheating. So that kind of discouraged me from drawing at all because yeah, I thought, okay, I, I don't know. I don't know how to draw a nose. And if using reference is cheating, then I will never <laughs> learn or know how to draw a nose. It was so ridiculous if you think about it now, but yeah, that was what it's, it was like at the time. And it's like, well, I'm just a cheater then, <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, so, I kind of disagree I with that idea. But... <laughs> of course, yeah. of course, I completely disagree with it now that I know the truth. <laughs> Yeah, just an FYI to anyone watching who may be wondering. I, I also disagree um, with that uh, yeah. idea. Please yeah. use references. Don't be afraid. Anybody can, like, what actually happened was that after I was so discouraged, I started, go I went to, uh, to university to study a science degree. And because I was good at, like, chemistry, biochemistry, mostly a little bit of physics. So... Yeah, I, I ended up going the, down the science path and I oh, just okay. stopped drawing. I just quit drawing. I oh. had to dedicate my time to, to other stuff and I just stopped drawing and I said, okay, um, I did like phone doodles and that kind of stuff. Like I, the last serious drawing that I attempted to make is very funny because it's a witch. It's a witchy themed um, drawing and... I tried to paint an acrylic painting of a witch in a library, like she was mm -hmm. cooking a potion, and like not similar to what I'm doing today, but the vibe is very similar. Okay. She was like an anime witchy girl in a in a library, and I was so frustrated that I destroyed the canvas. And now I regret because now I, I would have oh. a story to <laughs> I could show it and say this this is what discouraged me. This was the last straw. Uh, but yeah, it was like a witchy girl in the library, surrounded by books, magic books. And I tried to do this on acrylic for some reason, on a, on a canvas. And this, this was totally not my thing, not my expertise, no thing. So yeah, that was the last straw. And I just quit drawing for a long while. Until one day, see. the curiosity was too strong and I joined a local... Um, there was a drawing class that lasted a couple weeks. I could uh, fit that in my schedule and I said, oh, okay, let's just go there and see if I can learn something. Okay. <laughs> and the teacher there opened my eyes because he said, like something that he said to the class just resonated with me. And he said that anybody could learn how to draw. That it was yeah. muscle memory and anybody could do that if they put their minds to it. Uh, it's muscle memory and observation and of course some people are born with a lot of talent um they because i'm from malaga we always have the figure of picasso <laughs> it's oh, okay. it's very present uh, it's the, the museum and everything <laughs> is here so yeah it, it's like a very present figure and i was like i'm not picasso i know that because but even picasso he practiced so much and they never tell you about this part of the story um this man was a genius because of the way that he implemented his techniques but he also had to study a lot yeah and this is the part that they don't tell you there was a you lot of work definitely um yeah i've always described drawing as a fine <laughs> wine um it's like you can always put more in today and you'll get the benefits from it like 
in the future, mm. you know, and it, it's almost like a without fail. It feels like a relationship to me. It's like you you put something in today and you might not necessarily see the effect or the benefit like immediately, but um, it's it's like a like a, a guaranteed investment almost, and you, you'll get a return in the future. Uh, it mm. it inevitably ages like a fine wine. So um, it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, and I also want to give a shout out to the chat. Um, Momo says uh, they, you know, have always been doodling, but they took it seriously at around, I think, the same age that um, Coco you're mentioning. Um, and welcome Anne, who has also been a guest on Doodle Therapy, said that she's been drawing forever, but didn't take it seriously until she was like 26, 27. Um, Nikisha says that they used to trace comics when they were young and started drawing last year at age 37. Awesome. Congrats, oh, Nikisha. Um, amazing. And I also want to, yeah. And I want to say hello I love to, to hear Sil that. Yeah, <laughs> me too. Um, and I want to say hello and welcome to Celine, to Christian, um, Golden Rose. Um, it's great to have y'all here. Um, you know, while we are, uh, you know, chatting about, you know, welcoming everyone in and the uh, birthday, I wanted to just quick give a quick, um, you know, recap of Doodle Therapy and to celebrate our one year. So I've got the um, birthday stuff on the screen temporarily. Um, but yeah, these are some of the amazing submissions that we've gotten over the year, over the past year. Uh, I'm going to zoom in so you can take a closer look at some of these um, gorgeous submissions and this is just like the tip of the iceberg like I, I could not fit everyone's submissions in um, it would be like pages and pages um, so you know I just tried to pick a few from every week that we've been on um, this is a comic that Deb made um, when she was on uh, as a guest oh this is one that um, Anne made when she was on as a guest mm -hmm. and this is one that Catherine made when she was on as a guest um, you know, that these were from our keyboard session with Susan, AKA Mint, who I believe is in the chat as well. Uh, I've got a page two um, that covers some of the earlier submissions. So it's just a quick sampling of um, the amazing work that the community produces uh, through the um, doodle themes and the submissions. And I just wanna say thanks to everyone uh, to the viewers for watching, whether you're someone who just joined today for the first time, or if you're someone who watches regularly and has submitted doodles before, it's just so cool to see. And like, I feel like I've made so many friends, um, both with the guests and the viewers, uh, through the past year. And it's, um, it's been really special. And I also want to say a quick thank you to all of the past guests who have been on the stream. So, um, you know, these are these are the amazing guests that we've had on. Um, and uh, it's been really cool to have learned from everyone. I've got the past streams on my website at biasly slash doodle dash therapy. If you want, ever want to catch any of the past um, streams and interviews with these amazing guests. Um, and I feel like all of these, if you put all these topics together, it's kind of like a crash course in uh, really interesting illustration topics. Um, so, you know, of course, today we're doing magic with Coco and um, our next stream, which will be in two weeks, will be with Frankie Sihi um, and we'll be doing patterns. So thanks to all of our guests for joining us. And I also want to say thanks to Adobe, the Adobe Live team for enabling this, for being open to my random pitch a year ago. Um, and we sort of developed this concept of creating a show that's like educational, but also really relaxing and soothing. Uh, in response to the pandemic and being apart. So thanks to Adobe, thanks to our awesome mod, Sam, who um, has always, you know, been there with, for us in the chat. And I also want to say thanks to my boyfriend, Jeffrey, who is the behind the scenes tech guru. Um, you know, it really takes a whole team to put this stream together. So thanks. And I've also got my egg tart, which I will be eating to celebrate. <laughs> It's like my version of a birthday cake. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, heading back over to the uh, drawing portion of the stream. Um, but I just want to give a quick shout out to everyone who has been a part of the Doodle Therapy journey. It's been so cool to see. This is a, a great project uh, that 
all of you have going on and I want to congratulate you for for it. it is oh, your, thanks. Uh, yeah, and, and you know, it's really, I think, um, a project that we've all made together. So it's been cool mm -hmm. to uh, kind of build it with the community. Also, you're so fast. Oh, oh my gosh, I feel like I no. looked away for a second <laughs> no. and yeah, you're so fast. I love it. Um, do you mind oh, yeah, if I no. ask you random questions about your process? Oh, feel free. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, so um, right now, you know, you've got your like sketch drawing and then you're like working on the shapes underneath it. I'm curious if um, you uh, treat your sketch like drawing as the final line work as well, or do you like go back and refine that ever? Uh, like how, what's your process mm -hmm. there? Well, on watercolor, yes, my my sketch. I for watercolor, I usually sketch on iPad because okay. I find it more comfortable to do and do transform, uh, switch a different kind of composition. To me, it's it's wonderful to have the tool that makes this process a lot faster to figure out. And I try to make my sketch as precise as possible in relation to the final line art. Mm -hmm. And with digital, because I mostly, this kind of illustration, I normally do um, on watercolor because I really like to do gradients with watercolor, just let uh, the colors flow on the paper. Uh, it's my favorite part. And for this uh, experiment that I'm doing here, <laughs> same as she is doing an experiment in the lab, I'm doing an experiment <laughs> with, the, with the iPad oh, and the I love canvas. That. Because yeah. I'm trying out um, something that is making a very precise sketch, um, like very faithful to the line art that I want to have in the in the end. And then what I will do is do a color test underneath and then lower the opacity and do the oh. line art on top of that. So I think it will be an interesting way of doing it. I've tried it sometimes for, for stickers because I usually use digital techniques for smaller uh, product design. I run an online store and I like to have both prints, but I also like to do a little merch like animal pins and stickers. So these things, I cannot help myself. It's just so cool to win down and uh, use the iPad for, for this kind of work because it's yeah. like, like it's so comfortable to just draw on the screen and and see the lines up here. <laughs> amazing yeah uh, it it's relaxing a to learning watch. Curve, but once i got used to working on the ipad i just couldn't go back to the <laughs> to the computer and the the back ache yeah <laughs> i just love on ipad <laughs> i love on yeah. ipad that you can work on it and um sit on your couch you know i think that's yeah. honestly like the big um like competitive differentiator is i can like draw on my bed you know yeah. um i still ooh, love my wacom uh, but ipad has, same. has taken a, a big space in my heart yeah and we always get questions about the products that we're using so just to recap coco is drawing um using adobe fresco the, uh, the fresco app on her ipad and then i'm using photoshop on my cintiq which is connected to my computer um and uh, ooh, uh, welcome to Ellie versus Bear. It's great to see you in the chat. Jessica has a great question, which is, how are you each able to find your drawing styles? Do you feel like it is okay to take inspiration from other artists' work that you admire? That's a great question. Yeah, um, uh, well, I think that being on the internet, um, like consuming the same culture, like as a generation uh, has yeah. shaped many of us into tackling. I mean, look at our sketches, like we came to the session, we hadn't really discussed what, what we were going to draw. And we went for a concept that can be a little similar. And yeah. I think there's magic in that. Like we come from very different backgrounds from all around the world and we are all influenced by, by the things that we grew up with that happen to be similar. You told me earlier that a lot of people are like inspired by Sailor Moon. Also, there is, yeah. there is a Ghibli movies. Um, yes. I found about those late in my life because when I was a kid, 
I could only like rent them on, on uh, VHS, <laughs> like the video oh, okay. uh, cassette. <laughs> And uh, for some reason, they were always unavailable. Now I know why, because they're amazing movies. <laughs> they are. And, uh, yeah. And I think that we are all a little shaped by, by similar things. So, yeah, uh, like about other artists, I uh, think that being on the internet, uh, like consuming artwork from other people, because I, I mostly use social media just to follow fellow illustrators. So I think that in the end, we, of course, we pick up, like we're trying new te techniques because we see somebody else try them or a new kind of marker or a new type of brush. I don't know, I think it's fun to experiment, but you shouldn't forget that everything that you make, that everything that you uh, craft with your hands is going to have, inevitably, is going to have your imprint on it and you yeah. i mean yeah as a starting point um yeah you you can you can take inspiration from other people while you're when you're learning i think there is nothing unhealthy about that as long as you're conscious but yeah. eventually it will just keep showing your like you have to i read this very interesting theory um I think it was last year, it popped up on Twitter and I thought it was brilliant. Uh, it was about photography, but I think it really can uh, help us uh, as illustrators. Because you know how every time there's a new meme or, or a new famous cat on the internet, I don't know, like it will inspire many people and sometimes you will happen to have the same inspiration as somebody else, but you didn't know that somebody else had got the same idea as you, but you know, yeah. you were inspired by the same thing. So you come up with something that can be a little similar. And, you know, sometimes it can make us feel bad. Like, oh my God, what, did I see this before? And I didn't realize what, what is going on, what is happening? And there was this theory about photography that is called the Helsinki bus, the Helsinki okay. bus station. And it says that no matter the discipline that you embark on, in this case, it was about photography, I believe, but it said that when you start specializing in a discipline, for example, if you're a photographer and you decide to photograph national parks, um, your work mm -hmm. will, when you, when you first go to a gallery and present your work, um, I mean, if it's, if it's good enough to end up in the gallery, I guess. Because I don't know, that is something that that uh, it was about students of photography in a very big university or whatever. So yeah, I thought, wow, this is like some really serious stuff, you know. And yeah. they, it said that when the galleries are in the gallery, because you know the gallery for us could be social media, I guess. And right. they said that when the gallerists and the critics that will do like the newspaper cover <laughs> when they are at the gallery and they see your work and they get to interview with you. They might mention that, you know, that your work reminds them of this. Okay, I can't remember his name, but there is this very famous um, National Park photographer from the US. <laughs> Forgive me because um, I don't remember. Ansel Adams? Uh, I think it's Adams. Yeah, I, okay. that is very yeah, The black and white photos? Okay. Yeah yeah okay 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 thank you <laughs> so yeah it said that when when the when the young student is compared to the to the famous photographer the young student can get frustrated and can say no this is me i made these photographs of the national parks um they can get very frustrated because no like artists don't uh, don't enjoy having their work compare or you know, sure. can can feel like, oh my God, no, they, this is me. I made this. I invented this. How dare you? And it said that this reaction is very, very bad for the photographer because it will discourage the photographer from pursuing this field. And they might try it another. They might say, okay, I'm going to stop photographing um, things like um, national parks. I'm going to photograph women with um i don't know <laughs> and sure. they say yeah, that like no fashion. matter what when the photographer begins their journey again 
again, they're going to be compared with somebody who, you know, 20 years before they, they came and did the same thing. Because as you know, the world is, is kind of limited in that sense. And you know that everything is a remix kind of discourse. Yeah. Uh, in a way, they are kind of, we, we are kind of cursed <laughs> as artists because uh, there is always somebody who came before. Like for, so many times I post um, a drawing. I have this little book that I made um, a couple of years ago and there's like a known girl. Okay. And I've had many people say it reminds me of Ariety, like the, the Ghibli oh, movie. Uh -huh. And I haven't watched that one yet. So every time I get the comment, it's like, Okay, I get what you mean because I'm familiar with the plot, but honestly, I I don't I couldn't possibly, uh, you know. But right. it's okay. To just okay. It's it's not a bad thing. Like uh, that we repeat the concepts and they're there, and we all get inspired by these similar whimsical ideas. Um, so yeah, say, like the the theory says. To the to a young photographer, it says that in the bus station of Helsinki, the buses share uh, the same path during the first I don't know like five kilometers or something. And it okay. said that if you get off the bus and you return by foot to the station, you're going to encounter these same stops on whatever bus you pick. So it just says stay on the bus, stay on the Helsinki bus, <laughs> and eventually it will branch out to somewhere different. So I don't know. Oh, okay. I it was very nice theory, uh, very inspiring for for um, anybody who is like starting in a, an artistic endeavor. So I don't know. I encourage everybody to start drawing no matter how. Like if it's in, if you are inspired by somebody, if you are doing studies, I remember there is this Spanish manga artist when I was a kid, I would copy her Debian art art on my sketchbook and I would write next to it, inspired by the name Aww. of the artist. She is Imma Ruiz. I was a huge fan of her and I actually got to meet her uh, a couple of years ago. And that I could, exciting. Have not, could, have, could not believe it. I could not believe it. <laughs> like She came to my stand on a convention and bought a pin from me. I could not believe that it had happened. Oh, that's my, cute. My childhood hero. <laughs> my hero yeah. was there and I, I could not believe that. So it's it's very beautiful that, I don't know, to follow this path and, you know, everybody is on the bus. Sometimes we get off in the same station. Sometimes we stay for a little longer. Sometimes we don't wait for the bus and, you know, sometimes we just don't do art for years and then suddenly one day <laughs> decide to go back to it. Yeah, um, that's a really great answer to the question. Thanks. And I hope I hope Jessica I <laughs> hope that, so um, <laughs> answers your question. I mean, I think I generally agree. Um, we, like none of us are, you know, reinventing <laughs> art. Right? We're not like the godfather of drawing or something, but we are the creators of our own voice and um just by being you like your voice is unique and it, it will become um something that's like unique to you i i find that even when i have tried to imitate other people like it always ends up not being like their other person's work and then it kind of ends up just looking like my stuff but though it looks kind of clear that i tried to take a little bit of inspiration um i would say uh it's totally cool to like take inspiration from other people's work. Like that's, I, th I think that's like part of being a human is just to like experience life, right? And that's like a part of absorbing the colorfulness of life. I would say the line is when you are uh, really copying from like one person's work and ju just that one person um, and you're not like mixing it with other parts of your perspective. Um, I think that's when it can get a little weird. And I think it's also different, like if you're a student or if you're learning, but like if you're like professionally producing work and you're deliberately uh, trying to like basically be like someone else, um, that's where it can get a little weird, especially if the other person is like your peer. 
um, as opposed to like a you know big studio like Ghibli or something. Um, but yeah, I think like a good a good like way to just address that is to examine what interests you and try to combine that into your own new perspective. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I've definitely fallen into that trap when I was younger and. I like look too heavily to other people's work, which was helpful in learning technically how they, you know, did this little part or how did they get this effect here. But actually, it like hurt me a little bit because it meant that like I didn't focus on doing what I thought was best. I would just try to think about like, oh, what would this person do, or like, what would, what would, how would this look in this person's style, as opposed to thinking about like, what do I think is right. So um, it's kind of like a balance that you just have to be aware of. You know, but I think it's like mm-hmm. life. Like you, I mean, in life, you know, you don't want your life to be the exact same as someone else's. You can take little bits that you like from other people's life and um, no, combine even if it. If you want and, it, it's impossible. You, you cannot. Yeah, see totally. The experience uh, that you go through that's impossible. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. What a great question. Hmm. Yeah, I think um, that uh, when somebody is figuring out um, their style they have to I, I tried many things uh, during this time and I still have to try so many things in fact this year I wanted to try painting more back, backgrounds because it's something that I wanted to do more in 2020 it's something that scares me and I uh, have tried using um, screenshots from Totoro <laughs> As a reference, uh, last year I, I was oh, trying cute. to do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Ghibli backgrounds are so use. amazing. Yeah, oh, but sorry. I, I wanted to experiment more and like look at different kinds of... Um, because in, in Andalusia here, our, our forests are like the dry kind of vegetation. Oh, okay. And I would like to, to try to expose um my my vision to more of this um like study the how do you call it the environment uh, the landscape study oh, the yeah. landscape more because i i always have this tendency to to try to draw very large vegetation because i i, I try to draw the place where i would like to be but i also want to pay homage to the place where i'm from we don't have here in the south we we have forests, uh, but they are not the the kind that you see in the movies. The this very very oh, green see. forest where you can feel like I've lost <laughs> a creature. I don't know. It's it's a. Uh, I, I find those forests very magical, and I love them so much. But I also want to co- like balance that with the uh, with the experience that I have here. That is a uh, a more modest kind of vegetation <laughs> uh, but yeah yeah I, I want to i want to reconnect with that so hopefully this year i'll be i'll be pushing that part a lot more and i'm just i was so afraid of challenging in in 2020 and I, I didn't feel the courage <laughs> it was a very difficult year for everybody yeah i mean it was it was definitely a really hard year it still is but there's seems like there's kind of like more light at the end of the tunnel now oh yeah um, yeah, yeah and that's that's a great uh i guess like topic that's one of my favorites is like you know thanks for sharing what one of your goals is um what are yeah. your goals for this year my goals for this year oh what a great question you know that's so weird i haven't like deliberately thought about it i mean yeah. as a person okay i guess like this is the thing is <laughs> i feel like my life and my goals as a person are so intertwined with like my life and my goals as an artist. You know, I used to really try to separate the two, but now I'm just like, no, I'm it's it's so interchangeable. So like as a person, I really want to explore more of the world and travel a little bit more. And, you know, because the entirety of last year, we just stayed inside and I like only talked to like two people in person. Right. So I just want to soak in and travel to new places. Um, and uh, reconnect with like my culture um, as well. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I think uh, that will have like definitely an impact on my my work is just like, as I go out and experience new things, like I'll just be inspired by that in my work. 
Um, but like more practically, uh, la I'm a muralist, so I make like really mm -hmm. large scale installations. But last year I really had to pause that because of COVID, uh, you know, it, you just can't really, it's so hard to like be in person. And I actually turned down like mural opportunities because I didn't feel like they were the most safe, you know, given the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, and this year, uh, it's kind of crazy, but like, I feel like the mural like market is heating up again, just cause people are getting vaccinated and things are opening up, offices are opening up. Oh. So um, yeah, I'm really excited to be working on a lot more murals this year. And I missed it so much. Like I, I just love creating big art pieces of art. And so that's, that's definitely a goal. It's just like get bigger and bigger uh, with my, <laughs> with my artwork. Oh um, I yeah, and I want to part of your work. <laughs> I, yeah, and I definitely want to ask about your goals too. I, I mean, you've mentioned that you have a shop, um, and also I know that you do streams, and that's something that you do regularly. Her streams are like so soothing. You guys have to check check them out on YouTube. Um, but um, what are what are some of your goals or like projects that you're excited about this year? Well, I do want to continue with that. I started streaming on, on Twitch on Fridays every week. Um, I made that a regular thing. It kind of happened. It happened very organically. And I thought, okay, let's do something calm at the end of the week um, to, I don't know, it's because I really miss, I, I used to go to conventions uh, a lot before the pandemic, uh, like, you know, these comic conventions in which there's artist alleys and not only is it fun because you get to see your <coughs> sorry uh, you get to see your fellow artists um, from the same country or, or from abroad because I, I had plans to go to Germany and uh, France oh. I had mm -hmm. never been to a convention outside so it was scheduled for last year unfortunately it could not happen and I really miss the aspect in which you get to interact with people like like in real time about not just the comment that you reply on social media, but the being able to have this exchange. And when I started doing this on Twitch, I was really surprised that, I don't know, that it was so, so fun. I, I thought that I would feel a little, I don't know, that I would feel a little overwhelmed, that maybe I would, um, get uh, too shy <laughs> but no I, i've been enjoying them a lot so they have become like a, my little friday ritual to disconnect from the week uh i just have like a nice chat with the people uh, people are super super nice uh we really have a nice time and i didn't know i, I mean I, I thought that twitch was for video games <laughs> I oh, I, no I mean, idea. I there was an art community. It's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I think they started as video games, right? Or a lot of these like communities, mm -hmm. uh, tools like Discord started uh, uh, like heavily for video gamers. Correct me mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, video gamers. Um, but I think it's like cool to see see uh, these communities form. And thanks to Sam for linking Coco's Twitch in the mm -hmm. chat. Um, and also welcome to Greg and Amy, Amy Hood, for joining us in the uh, in the chat. I want to say hello to the to the people in the chat. There are some familiar faces. I cannot see the chat, which is where. Oh yeah. Um, I haven't um, said hello before. <laughs> yeah, hello I mean, uh, just to give a recap, uh, I'm gonna zoom out on my image, and Coco, oh, okay. maybe you could zoom out a little yeah. on yours too, um, just for the people who are just joining um, now, but we are creating magical illustrations. Um, you know, since Coco's work is so magical, we wanted to create a theme that just is aligned with that vibe. And uh, what we mean by magical is something that is a little surreal, a little imaginative, you know, not, not like a literal drawing. Um, so Coco and I are both creating different pieces. Um, I'm making a girl who's pouring a cup of tea, but it's a magical cup of tea with fish swimming around her. Um, and Coco's working on iPad and it's looking amazing. Oh no, not yet. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. 
Oh my god. Oh, it's it's so uh, experimental for me to to work like this digitally because I don't usually tackle big illustrations, but you know, this is the year for challenges. Um Dude, the, it looks amazing. Art, uh, in the art uh, department, I want to experiment with new techniques. I've been implementing gouache lately in my traditional Ooh. work. And the streams are a great place to experiment. I remember um I think it's, it was a couple of weeks ago. We had this stream in which I just, uh, I, I just had like a blank paper. I did, sometimes I just bring my sketch pre-made, like I jump on the stream and I know I'm going to be painting this or that. But I just brought my blank piece of watercolor paper and I said, okay, let's decide on a title for the stream. And I said, okay, let's doodle some pelicans. Um, I've never drawn a pelican <laughs> before that. <laughs> So I was just experimenting with drawing a new animal. So trying to study the like the shapes, trying to to sensitize the, the shapes of, of the realistic photograph into my doodly manga-ish style. <laughs> and it yeah. was really fun because I brought three different types of inking tools. There was a brush, there was a marker, there was a, another kind of brush. And then there were like three types of uh, materials for coloring. There was watercolor, gouache, and ink. And it was very fun because I let the like the people who are watching the stream they get to choose. We do polls a lot. <laughs> I love oh, the cute. poll with the with the audience. It's really fun because everybody gets to to decide which is the technique that we're trying out and. I really enjoy that that part using the streams on Fridays as a as the experimental moment because during the week I might be working on products for the shop or working on something freelance. Um, I, I'm using my known techniques, but on the Friday I just go and experiment with something fun. It's it's very relaxed. Um, nobody is judging that I cannot draw a pelican. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. Um, and, and I, I also want to say, really <laughs> yeah, and I also want to say um, thanks to Uriel uh, for the super helpful tidbit that Ooh. the name Twitch uh, started as a video game platform and it's named after a League of Legends character named Twitch. That is, is an extremely oh fun fact. Yeah. Oh, oops. Looks like a fresco uh, went down. Well, while you're loading <laughs> that. Oh my um, God. Yeah. It's back. It's back. It's saved. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you should always uh, no, say. No, it was because no, no, no. Disclaimer: I have a, a very old iPad. Um, I'm using the one of the first generation iPad Pros, I think. And, oh, I see. Actually, and Fresco it, auto saves. Um, cannot support a lot. <laughs> um, well, you know, we're almost. Yeah, we've got a. I thought. I, I, I thought it was lost. <laughs> Um, well, we've got a few more minutes left in our stream. Um, the time has flown by. Oh. So, um, you know, if you're just joining us, I just want to say <laughs> welcome. Um, and, you know, I'm sharing some uh, doodle submissions um, from our year one of the doodle therapy stream. And this definitely isn't all of them. I just had to pick a couple highlights from every week. Otherwise it would just be like super long. Um, but I noticed that Ivy joined in the chat and I've got Ivy's um, cute snack pieces here. Um, and yeah, you know, there's just been so many really cool submissions, both from the guest artists and the um, viewers alike. So I just want to say thanks to everyone for joining our stream. Um, and also thanks to all the guests uh, whose names I've put up here, uh, as well as the topics that we've covered on this stream. It's been really, really fun. Um, and of course, this week we're doing magic with uh, Coco. So, you know, we are nearing the end of the stream. Um, like I mentioned, time has flown by super, super fast. Glitz oh. out here. Yeah, I think um, I think maybe your uh, iPad ha has disconnected, but no worries because it's oh, a uh, <laughs> it's a good time for us to um, you know sort of wrap things up and do a quick overview <laughs> of uh, what we covered today. So we uh, t took a look at some of Coco's really magical work. 
Um, and we ended up creating some magical illustrations. Coco and I started with pencil sketches and now we're moving into the color painting portion. And stay tuned for day two tomorrow, which will be at the exact same time, 3, 3 p.m. Pacific time as we finish up our sketches. Um, which is cool because I feel like I'm sort of being influenced by the colors that you're using just because your screen is like right in front of my uh, drawing, drawing uh, pad. Um, and uh, once again, you know, thanks to everyone for joining us on Doodle Therapy, whether it's for the first time today or um, regularly over the past year. I can't believe that we've been on for a full year and um, this community is really lovely. If you ended up creating a magical illustration submission and would like to share it, it would honestly make my day. Um, feel free to tweet at me or Instagram me at by Alice Lee. And you can also share it with Coco, who is Coco underscore underscore Glez. Um, I really just love seeing everyone's doodles. Um, and yeah, Coco, do you have any uh, last words in our last 30 seconds? Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Um, we'll be back again here tomorrow. <laughs> My iPad yeah. kind of <laughs> crashed because and it's, yeah. <laughs> tomorrow it will and be in full energy. <laughs> and tomorrow, you know, we'll cover topics that we didn't get to today, like um, oh. social media, uh, you know, which, which we discussed off stream, um, uh, streaming in general, cool projects art thoughts, etc. So thanks to everyone for joining and have an awesome rest of your day. Bye. Thanks everybody. Bye.